Have you ever seen buds that look like this or this or this? Well, these are fake, but there are plenty of different cultivars that actually do grow with some sick purple colors. These purple plants look really cool and they usually smell great, but these purple plants also contain something very special that makes them the most beneficial type of weed you could ever find. In this video, we're gonna learn the reason why only some plants turn purple. We're gonna bust some common myths about purple plants and we're gonna look at why the same things that create these cool purple colors can also create some of the best medicinal weed known to man. Lots of plant facts coming in this video and some crazy stuff at the end, so get your purple buds ready and don't forget to subscribe. Almost all plants start their growth cycle with a green color because of the chlorophyll that the plants use to absorb light. Chlorophyll doesn't absorb green light, so that is the color that is reflected off of plants that we can see. But plants also contain other things that help them with photosynthesis besides chlorophyll that reflect back other colors of light like red, blue, or purple. And cannabis is no different. Sometimes plants need to protect themselves from the intense light of the sun, and for this, some plants use something called anthocyanin which are just water-soluble pigment molecules. The word anthocyanin comes from two Greek words that mean blue flower, and anthocyanins can present themselves in a range of colors from bright blues, vivid reds, and the deep purples that we see in cannabis. So far, over 400 unique types of anthocyanins have been identified, and in a plant, they work to block certain light intensities and spectrums that could burn or stress the plant. The plant is just like, okay, this green is really absorbing a load of light, maybe too much light. If I just change colors, now I won't absorb the same spectrums of light, natural sunblock. And besides being a natural sunblock for the plants, it is also believed that the bright colors made by anthocyanins are used to attract pollinators like bees. So now that we know all of that, let's cover some of the common myths that you might hear about purple weed. Some people will say that you can stress out any weed plant enough to make it turn purple, and I have heard all kinds of different ways that you supposedly can make this happen. In the past, people thought that depriving the plant of oxygen, CO2, or nitrogen can make it turn purple, but that doesn't work. Some people even think that you can use purple additives in your water to sort of dye the weed purple, but that doesn't work either. Of course it doesn't. These are fake photo edits. And one very common myth that you will hear all the time is that you can just get it really cold where your plants are growing and no matter what, they're gonna turn purple. This one is close, but still not quite true. Here's one. When the seasons change and the weather gets colder, you will see the leaves on trees start to turn from green to yellow to red and maybe even purple. And that's because the colder temperatures in fall cause the green looking chlorophyll in the leaves to break down. And all the other colors that the anthocyanins make can now start to show through through, and that's when you see the red and purple looking leaves. Some people think that if you just copy nature and drop the temp of your grow room during flower, the same thing that happens in the trees outside will happen to your weed plants. There are some true parts to this and some false parts. Purple pigments are made when extra sugars that the plant makes become stuck in the plant as nutrient transport slows down. And this does happen because the temperature is starting to drop, but that isn't all there is to it. It really comes down to the plant genotype and phenotype. Only certain genotypes of cannabis will even be able to produce anthocyanins. And of those select genotypes, some specific phenotypes will be more or less likely to produce these purple pigments. I have a whole video about genotypes and phenotypes that I'll link down in the description if you want to learn more about that. But the point is, even though these cold temps are helpful to bring out these purple colors, it can only bring it out if the plants have it in their genetics in the first place. And some plants just simply don't have that in their genetics. Like if you want to see my secret third nip, you might just try to turn down the AC to make it poke out and make it look more noticeable. But no matter how cold you make it, my third nipple will never poke out if I don't have that in my genetics to begin with but I do, it's large. And the same is true for the opposite of that too. So if you are growing a plant that just naturally produces lots of anthocyanins and it just really wants to turn purple, it almost will no matter what. I mean, you'll have to like keep your plant healthy, but you might not have to do anything crazy with the temps. This Cushman's cut I'm growing was only at week four of flower and it already started to show the first signs of purple in the leaves. And I've never had the temps drop below 72. I've already seen this phenotype I have have growing before
before and it gets very purple. I can't wait till it's finished and I can actually roll some up because purple strains like this are probably some of the best weed you can ever find. And I'm about to tell you why. But speaking of rolling up, this episode is brought to you by King Palm, the all-natural smoking wrap that is shaking up the industry with their tobacco-free blunt wraps. They're empty tubes that you simply pack and load. They also have these new flavor tip terpene capsules you can squeeze and pop to get some more flavor. Plus, all of their wraps are tested from SC Labs so you know they're nice and clean. Super smooth smoke, easy to use. Get them on kingpalm.com. Your local shops are even your local 7-Eleven. So now we know that anthocyanins are what make weed turn purple. And we learned that only certain strains are even capable of of making these cool purple colors. But cannabis isn't the only plant that contains anthocyanins. Some other plants that have these same colorful pigments are strawberries, blackberries, sweet cherries, red onions, grapes, mulberries, pomegranates, black currants, black elderberries, all kinds of other colorful things that are considered superfoods. And a lot of these foods are considered superfoods because studies have found that the anthocyanins inside them are powerful antioxidants and they have a huge range of super positive health effects. A 2017 study on anthocyanins in food showed that anthocyanins possess anti-diabetic, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and anti-obesity effects, as well as prevention of cardiovascular diseases. Therefore, anthocyanins extracted from edible plants are potential pharmaceutical ingredients. Another study from 2004 also showed that anthocyanins are great for your vision, and they Said, visual acuity can be markedly improved through administration of anthocyanin pigments to animal and human subjects. And the role of these pigments in enhancing night vision or overall vision has been particularly well documented. Plants full of anthocyanins have been used medicinally for centuries and it is very possible that you're getting a lot of the same medicinal benefits that you would get from purple food from your favorite purple nugs. Especially if you are using those purple nugs to make edibles. We still need to do more studies on exactly what happens when you smoke or vape anthocyanins and how they work in the entourage effect along with all of the other compounds found in cannabis. But we already know how many great things they can do in food, so any edibles made with these purple anthocyanin containing buds should, in theory, give you all of those same benefits. And something that is sick about anthocyanins are that they are found in all different parts of the plant. The root, the stems, the leaves, the buds and even the secondary metabolites like trichomes. So you will sometimes see these amazing pink or purple looking concentrates that look almost fake. And fake concentrates do exist. They are out there just like we looked at in this video where I showed you how to check your COA and make sure the stuff you're buying is real and that you're not getting ripped off. So make sure you click this video if you want to learn how to check your carts and check that COA to make sure that what you have is what you want and that nobody sold you something fake. I will see you there. Peace.